You are in the part of your art journey where you need to study stylized art. I'm at 217 and today I'm going to tell you the two things that you need to know to become a master of stylization. Let's get started. Stylization is a great way to experiment with your art and to take it to the next level. Stylization is a great way to stand out as an artist. There are amazing artists who stylize their art and their art looks amazing. So we're going to become masters of stylization right now, but we need a reference photo and boom. I love this reference photo. She looks amazing. I love the way she's staring at the camera. She's beautiful and those buns. No, not those buns, those buns. I'm not going to say it. Perverts, I said it. This reference photo is a perfect photo for what we're gonna do. We are gonna be talking about simping. I mean, no, not simping. Simplification. I know you guys already be simping out there. What I mean by simplification is taking the reference photo back to its basic shapes. If you get rid of the extra noise, the extra detail, then you only have these shapes that you already know how to draw. You have circles for the head, a two circles for the buns, triangle for her nose, and a basic shape for her body. Simplification. Now, you don't have to draw the shapes over it if you don't want to. A lot of artists can just see the shapes without drawing it. But if you make that invisible, you have this new reference and it's just the basic shapes. This is simplification. And this is a whole new reference photo. Think about it. If you and the millions of great artists that be on Pinterest find this reference photo and try to draw it as is, then chances are that everyone is gonna have very similar works of art. But if you just take the basic shapes and use that as a reference, then the chances are that everyone's gonna have something slightly different or very different. And that's the beautiful thing about stylized art. In fact, before we continue with the next thing that I need to tell you about for stylized art, let's do that. Let's try to draw this reference photo exactly as is. And for those of you who struggle having some accurate drawings from references, I'm gonna show you guys a trick. It's a forbidden technique called tracing. Wait, 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 stay with me, don't go. We're not tracing the actual reference photo. We're gonna trace those guidelines. So draw the circle in for the head, draw the brow line, and draw in the center line, but trace it over the reference photo. Add any other guidelines that you need, and now you have this second reference. Again, this is a lot easier and less intimidating to draw than this. So now you can draw separately those guidelines and you can see how the rest of the actual reference photo associates with those guidelines that you drew. This helps you to be more accurate in your drawing and it helps you be less intimidated. You can draw circles and lines. So give it a try, maybe this will help you out. And here it is, this is not the greatest drawing, we're gonna leave it here in the sketch phase, but I do believe that um, if this was for a client, then they would green light me to go to the next steps like inking and coloring and rendering. But for this, we're just gonna leave it here. Now we're gonna move on to the stylized part. That's right, we're gonna draw it again, but this time we're gonna add some simping, I mean simplification. And I mentioned that there's two things and you need to know that second thing to become a master. So that second thing is exaggeration. And I know what you're thinking, oh, but Ant, can we simplify stuff and exaggerate stuff? And the answer is yes. You can simplify things, take things back to their basic shapes and also exaggerate them. Exaggerate them in the size of it or the exaggerate the angles or lack of angles. There's so many ways that you can exaggerate something. To exaggerate doesn't mean to overcomplicate things, but it can if you want to exaggerate some complicated features. So if a character has a big nose, then you can draw in a nose that is even bigger. Exaggerate that. If a character has a small nose, you can make this nose even smaller. A good way to learn where to exaggerate things is to look at other artists. In particular, look at caricature artists. Caricature artists oftentimes exaggerate things to a big extreme. Now, you don't have to be as extreme as some of these caricature artists, but it's a good way to know where to exaggerate things, what to exaggerate. I draw on the nose and I exaggerate the shape of the nose, making it a smaller button nose. And she has those big buns on her head and I want to exaggerate them to make them even bigger. Now I'm taking away some of the detail in her hair because I don't want to draw every strand so I'm just making it a simplified circle for now. I'll go in later and make it look more like hair but I'm not going to draw every strand. We're going to simplify it 
and exaggerated to be bigger. I feel like those buns on her head is a key feature to her and it'll be a key feature in her character. So I gotta make them show even more. They're gonna be huge. And since you're stylizing your art, you can also get away from the reference. I use the same basic shape for her body, but I change her clothes a little bit. I make her tank top more of a um, V-neck and I change the straps from spaghetti straps to a thicker strap. I just like the way that looks better and I like the shape of the shirt looking more like a triangle rather than a square. And for the eyes, this is something that I always exaggerate. I want to make the eyes bigger. That's just a style choice that I really, really enjoy. You can look at examples from Disney. As you can see in this example from Tangled, this is Rapunzel. The eyes are extremely exaggerated, especially when she is doing the surprise shocked expression. This is a style choice that is very popular now due to um, Disney, but I really enjoy this, so I'm gonna do it as well. And once I'm done there, we wanna look at them both together. Look at that. They're the same reference, the same person, but they look completely different. And if you were to stylize this in your own way, it'll look even different from mine. So the millions of artists that drew the same reference photo without stylizing it, now stylize their art, we all have something almost completely different. There are a lot of differences in the character. I took out the nose bridge, made it more a simple nose, and I changed her clothing just a little bit. But this character, she looks a lot better. Even though it's the same person, she looks a lot better now. She looks like she has some pizzazz. Is pizzazz a word? I don't know, but she has some pizzazz. <laughs> now I do want to point out that I didn't draw the dreads in just yet. I'm not taking them out. I am going to put them in. But since I'm going to completely render this photo, I'm going to add in the dreads later because I want to use a specific brush to draw in that hair. I pick in the same colors that are from the reference with that yellow shirt, but the complementary color for yellow is purple. So I make her hair a more purple color which is also a style choice. I could have just used the same color as she has in her real hair, but I like the way the purple hair looked better. And it's not a bright purple, it's still kind of close to the darkness of her hair. I just like the way that looks. And stylization doesn't just stick to the sketching part or the inking part, you can also stylize your rendering. For me, I use cell shading. Cell shading is a stylized way of shading popularized by anime and cartoons because it simplifies the shadows into shapes. And then I exaggerate some of the shadows by making them darker. I want my darks darker and my lights lighter. Now I go into Photoshop because Photoshop has this amazing brush that I use for curly hair. It has an unbelievably awesome looking texture. Instead of drawing in each dread that this girl has, I just use this textured brush and I paint over where the hair would be. I make it look more like dreads by adding some rendering, adding some light to some of the strands and adding some darkness underneath some of the strands. I finish her up with some finishing touches, some lighting, and here she is, she looks amazing. And all we used was these two key features, simplification and exaggeration. But it doesn't end here. I stress this and I stress this. I want you to practice and practice and practice. I want you to practice stylization. I want you to practice simplification and exaggeration as much as you can. The more you do this, the more you will realize what you like to exaggerate, what you like to simplify. But that is how you become a master of stylization. And if you like this, then you can watch this video right here where I take an old children's how to draw book and I basically exaggerate what the drawings look like in there to make a new awesome artwork, which is still very stylized. I'm awesome. I think, thanks for watching.